Hi everybody, my name is Jacob, I'm with TACCOM HQ. And today I wanna to talk to you about our structured barrel and something that we stumbled upon and it was quite a surprise and we wanna be able to share it with you. So people often associate this barrel, which is a structured barrel. It is a large diameter blank that has a series of deep hole drills that run the majority of the length of its neck from the inside. You look here, you'll actually see a bunch of cord holes. People first look, first glance, they look at it and they say, oh my God, that thing's a can. It must be super heavy. If we look at a standard ELR barrel as our baseline, let's turn on our scale. There we go. Okay, so it's saying zero. Drop this on. Now this is a one and three and one and three quarter inch diameter barrel that measures 42 inches and it weighs 24 pounds, nine ounces. It is, of course, have to put a disclaimer. I don't know if this is going to be in view of the camera, so I'll shift this momentarily. There is a break on the end. That's a integrated break where the end of the barrel was machined uh, to be able to create that feature. It has been threaded, it has been chambered. So this is a fully finished barrel. And when you compare that to a structured barrel, there we have it, 23 pounds, three ounces. So nearly one and a half pounds lighter. Now, yes, the other barrel did have a break. Nevertheless, if you look at this length, we're also looking at 42 inches. So on that front, when you look at the end of this barrel, it does not have an integrated muzzle brake. It has not been machined on the end. It also has not been chambered or threaded. So even though this barrel does not have an integrated brake, it actually I think is highly representative and could be easily used for a comparative value to this ELR barrel. And here you can see now side by side. So arguably, I would actually say that our structured barrel, it still has quite a bit of weight that would be extracted in the finishing process. And it wouldn't surprise me if it'd be a pound plus. What are the advantages of one over another? If you look at just the pure baseline for physics, a structured barrel is going to be able to exude a higher second moment of area. If you were to take a solid rod and a tube of the same mass, based on its moment of inertia, and in this case, second moment of area, that tube, it will take substantially more force to bend than the solid rod. This barrel, you could say, is our solid rod. This barrel, you could say, is our hollow tube. Given the fact that these are effectively the same weights, the same principle, the same physics principle would apply to where this barrel is significantly stiffer than this standard barrel. And based on a aeronautical program called Combined Eulerian Lagrangian, it actually found that in that simulation that a structured barrel can be 56% stiffer than that of a standard barrel. It's well known that we have to load develop to find a you know cherry pick round to shoot from a standard barrel. That's not the case with a structured barrel. It pretty much will shoot what you feed it. Through a standard barrel, after consecutive shots, groups are opening up to where a standard barrel is going to be physically hot to the touch, where you could cook your hand. With a structured barrel, we're able to physically grab it with our bare hands, and you, you'd be hard-pressed to say that it feels warm after an extended shot string. People thought that a structured barrel was exorbitantly big, exorbitantly heavy. It's heat advantage was because of the sheer mass, the sheer thermal mass. And I, based on that scale, that's not the case that these barrels are actually the same, this lighter. What this pattern does do is it creates a tremendous amount of surface area. If you were to get all the finishes, now this of course varies, but just on a structural standpoint, you're looking at three, four hundred percent of increased surface area, which is not a small value. That is enormous, let alone the fact that when a bullet does pass through the muzzle brake and you have this low pressure zone right in front of the barrel, if you look at these holes on the back side, 
this is all connected. So when that bullet passes through, you have a, an intensely low pressure zone here, but then the ambient air for that split moment is high pressure here. So what that does, it actually air, a column of air gets sucked in through each of these vent holes and pulled through the neck of the barrel, cooling it from the inside out every time you shoot around. Are these impervious to heat? No, absolutely not. Again, that's where other physics will take over. However, a structured barrel does offer a tremendous amount of flexibility where you don't have to worry about excessive heat opening up your shock groups. Heat is defined on a physics principle as being vibration. If you look at the atomic level, there is always a temperature to anything. There's always gonna be a subtle vibration in atoms, and that vibration is what creates temperature as far as what we are able to measure. If you have movement, if you have vibration, what is that? That's temperature. Those harmonic waves, they can't just be spontaneous and, and erratic as far as their direction and function. Based on these features, it, it basically creates a, a pathway, a, a track that they, those waves have to follow. There's a lot of people that will note that when you shoot a structured barrel, it basically stays on target. It, you don't have a bullwhip effect. You're able to stay in a pocket where you're able to even tr uh, see trays. You're able to spot your own rounds using a structured barrel. If harmonics and did not matter, why do we have to load develop? And then why are we not all shooting a small diameter barrel? In competition where weight's everything, why have we not just gone and seen small diameter barrels? Better yet, why isn't everyone not shooting a pencil barrel? When you look at the standard of five shot groups, say over 100, 200 yards, that's a measure if the standard in comp say for ELRs to shoot 15 rounds consecutively, why not in this case push that standard of measure and performance to the 15 round mark? That's the end of the video, so thanks a lot for watching.